Let's talk about probability with replacement. Probability with replacement is actually very simple. Here I have a jar that contains 40 bears, 10 red, 10 green, 10 yellow, and 10 blue. I want to know the probability of this compound event. The compound event is reaching in, pulling out a green one, and then pulling out a yellow one. What is the probability of getting a green, then a yellow bear? Now, I want my events to be independent. Now there's 40 in there, 10 of each color. The probability of pulling out a green one is 10 out of 40, or 1 fourth. Now, there's no longer 40 bears in that container. The probabilities change until I put it back. Now all of a sudden, the first event does not impact the second one. They're independent events. I can reach in and pull out my second bear. So probability with replacement means you pull something out, drop it back in, and pull the next thing out. The same is true with a deck of cards. Here's a standard deck of cards, and suppose I want the probability of getting a red card and then pulling out a face card. Well, the first thing I do is I reach in and I pull out a card, okay? And once I record that card, here it's the queen of diamonds, I put it back into the deck. I have all 52 cards again, and then I can conduct my second event. So first event, return the card, second event. And so those keep the events, as we call, independent. Let's take a look at a couple of examples involving probability with replacement. When determining the probability of compound events, the first thing we want to know is if the events are independent or if they're dependent. If the scenario involves replacement, such as we saw a couple of moments ago with the cards and the bears, then the events are independent. Let's take a look at a couple of examples to determine if the scenario shows probability with replacement and independent or, in, or dependent events. First example says we have a bag that contains 10 Skittles, three red ones, seven green ones. Trevor draws one out and puts it back in the bag. Then he reaches in and draws another. The question is, does this experiment represent probability with replacement? Well, yes it does. Trevor reached into the bag, he pulled one out, dropped it back in, and then pulled out the second one. So there is certainly this event involving replacement. Now, because there's replacement, the events are independent. The second example says a box contains four bears. Mrs. Scoville draws one bear out of the box and replaces it onto her desk. Then she reaches in the box and pulls out another bear. Does this experiment involve probability with replacement? Well, Mrs. Scoville reached in, pulled a bear out of the box, and set it down on her desk. She didn't put the bear back in the box. She set it off to the side. So. There were four bears originally. Now there are only three for the second event. Clearly things have changed. Because she did not put it back, this does not represent probability with replacement. The events, therefore, are dependent. Example three and example four show other scenarios involving probability in experiments. Please pause here and take a moment to try three and four and then let's take a look at your answers. Example three, Mr. Dory is very hungry. He reaches into a bag of M&Ms and pulls out a red one. He eats it. Then he reaches into the bag to pull out a yellow one. Then he puts the yellow one back. Does this experiment have probability with replacement? The answer is no, it does not. Because Mr. Dory pulled one M&M out of the bag and then ate it, that M&M is no longer in the bag when we reach in for the second trial. The quantity of M&Ms have changed, and all of the probabilities have changed as a result. Therefore, these events are what we call dependent. What happened the first time had a very big impact on what could happen the second time. On example four, Mr. Dory is still hungry. He reaches into the bag. He pulls out a yellow one. Then he puts it back. He reaches in again, pulls out a red one. Then he eats it at the end of the experiment. The question is, 
Did he replace the first one before he drew the second one? Yes, he did. And because he replaced the first one after he drew it out, here we have probability with replacement. And because we have probability with replacement, we have events that are independent. Now, let's take a moment and actually calculate some probabilities um, in a few different scenarios. And on the next page, we're going to look at one such situation. Example 5 says that a jar contains one yellow marble and three green marbles. It says that a marble is chosen at random and replaced, and then a second marble is chosen at random. So we have this idea of probability with replacement. We have our jar, and inside our jar, we have several marbles. And let me just draw a little jar here so we can actually see it. And it says we have one yellow marble and three green ones. All right, and so here they are. And so let's take a look at the possible things that could happen with our tree diagram. I could reach into that jar the first time and I could pull out a yellow one, or I could pull out a green one. Now, when we do our tree diagram, it's helpful to write the probabilities right alongside with the work that we have going on. The probability of getting a yellow was 1 out of 4, and the probability of getting the green was 3 out of 4. And so I just put the probabilities right there in parentheses right next to it. Now, on the second trial, the second event, I've replaced the marble that I drew out the first time, and I'm going to reach into the jar, pull one more out. And one of two things could happen. I could either pull out a yellow one, or I could pull out a green one. And the same thing's true down below. If I pulled out a green one the first time, I could pull out a yellow, or I could pull out a green. So none of those probabilities there really changed. The probability the second time around of pulling out a yellow one is still 1 out of 4. And the probability of pulling out a green one is still 3 out of 4. Same is true down below. There's still 1 out of 4 in the jar that were yellow and 3 out of the 4 that were green. And so now I have my tree diagram. It's helpful to list the sample space. And in fact, I always recommend listing the sample space. And I'm going to do that right off to the side here. So I'm just going to write sample space. And I'm going to write down all the possible things that could happen. I could have gotten a yellow and then a yellow. Or I could have gotten a yellow first and then a green. Or I could have gotten a green, then a yellow. Or finally, a green and then a green. Now, let's determine the probabilities of each of these events happening. The first one I'm going to look at is right here, yellow, yellow. The probability of a yellow the first time was 1 out of 4. The probability of a yellow the second time was 1 out of 4. And so I'll use the counting principle, and I'll write the probability being 1 fourth times 1 fourth, or the probability of getting a yellow and then another yellow was really 1 out of 16. Now, let's take a look at the Second possibility, a yellow and then a green. Probability of the yellow was one-fourth. Probability of the green was three-fourths. And the counting principle says that's one-fourth times three-fourths. So let's write that down here. One-fourth times three-fourths. The probability of getting a yellow and then a green is three out of sixteen. We're going to do the same. We're going to continue right along. Next, we'll look at the green followed by yellow, 
counting principle says. That would be 3 fourths times 1 fourth. And so that's what I'll write down here. 3 fourths times 1 fourth. And when I multiply those out, 3 fourths times 1 fourth is 3 sixteenths. So there's a 3 out of 16 chance I get a green and then a yellow. Finally, the last possibility here is a green and then a green. And the counting principle says that's 3 fourths times 3 fourths. And so to find the probability of getting a green and then a green, I simply multiply the 3 fourths by the 3 fourths, and I get 9 16. There's a 9 out of 16 chance that I'll get a green and then a green. And so this is my sample space. And this is actually what's going to be very helpful for me in determining the probabilities that follow. Let's take a look at some examples that use these questions. 